Hello everybody, you're watching Rapid Phantom JS section 1 video 6, the last video of this section, which will give you a brief introduction to the included web page module and its API. In the previous video we extended our hello world script to read out system information and actually read out past system arguments. We used this information to show the user a well formatted output and to inform him or her if he or she is using our script in the wrong way. In this video we will implement the web page module and will load a website for the first time and render a screenshot of the loaded page. Because of the knowledge you have already gained about error handling and reading out system arguments, we will extend our script to open any website defined by a system argument. To finish this section, which includes all the fundamentals to really get started with complex PhantomJS scripting, we will render a basic image of the opened website. As we have learned, PhantomJS is a headless JavaScript scriptable. And now that we know the basics of good PhantomJS scripts, it is time to load our first website. To do that, we need to use the web page module provided by PhantomJS. Loading this module works the same way as loading the system module. We have to require and load the module on top of the script by just typing in var page equals require web page dot create. The module already provides a function called create, which will return a new instance of this module. We then have to assign this new instance to a variable, because we want to use it later on. Additionally, we get the desired URL from the system arguments and we will assign this to a variable called URL. This way we can use the same script for multiple websites, which can come in handy in the future. Thus, we easily implemented a new system argument and loaded the web page module. So let's just modify the existing log messages to show us the URL also. And modify the checks for proper script execution by changing the number of expected system arguments. Let's make a quick check to see if everything is working as expected. Looks pretty good. Now we are ready to load our first website. The web page module provides a lot of useful functions that are ready to use. The functions range from cookie handling, setting the size or the zoom factor of the particular window, to JavaScript execution, which will be really important to use later on. In section 2 we will use this module for page automation, advanced screenshot rendering and network monitoring. And it is by far the most powerful module that PhantomJS has to offer. For now let's only check out the open function. This function expects 2 to 4 arguments and we will use the basic version with 2 arguments. This is a common pattern in JavaScript, giving the option to use a different number of arguments. The only thing you have to keep in mind is that the callback, which I will explain in a second, has to be the last argument. The first argument defines the actual website we want to load. Fortunately, we set this one already up, so we can easily pass the URL variable to it. The second and in our case last argument is the callback. If you're not familiar with callbacks and asynchronous programming in JavaScript, let me just give you a quick explanation. JavaScript includes this principle of callbacks. Callbacks are actually functions that will be executed when something is done. In our case, the callback function will be executed when PhantomJS loads the page that we defined. And here comes the first trap when dealing with JavaScript and asynchronous programming. When we implement the open function in our script, we have to make sure that the phantom.exit call will be included inside of the defined callback function. If we forget to move it, PhantomJS will quit just before it is able to load the website because the callback will be invoked later on. The order in which the statements are included in our script does not matter in this case, because callbacks can be executed at any time and it does not matter where they are defined. So let's just call the page open command. The callback function will be invoked with a status argument. This argument will give us information about success or error. And because we are headless and we basically have no clue what is going on, let's implement some logging for this status argument. The render function of our web page object expects a string that defines the path to the rendered image. And it is really as easy as that. So let's check if the image will be rendered by executing our script and opening the image. Looks pretty good to me. 
To sum up this first section, we covered the usage and installation of PhantomJS, checked out some complex scripts to show off all the options of PhantomJS and learned how to implement the system, Phantom and web page module. In the next section, we will implement nice examples for page automation, page rendering, network monitoring and testing by ourselves. So I hope you are as excited as I am about the advanced scripts in section 2. I will see you next time.